Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. That's right. It is officially the round of 64 in the NCAA tournament March Madness. I'm Gary, running the show solo. It's a late night. Uh, I had to wait for the first four to get done. Had to write all my thoughts down, all that good stuff. But we got stuff that we got to get to, right? Obviously, we'll recap a little bit of the first four. Fantastic night of basketball, by the way. And I got to give you my best bets for the first round of the NCAA tournament. And, uh, and I'll go ahead and give you my bracket breakdown before the games start. You know, I, I would imagine you'll be listening to this in the morning or watching if you're on YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go ahead and dive into it. First things first, you all know how this goes. WinningCuresEverything.com is the website. Everywhere you need to be subscribed is right over there. All of our college football content you can find over at SportsBookReview.com, SBRPicks.com slash NCAAF. All of that stuff is down in the description. We do a YouTube show for them once a week. That is our college football show. You can find it over on YouTube, SBR Picks. Just search that out. Very easy to do. There's also a link in the description. If you would like to join our bracket pool, our bracket challenge, whatever you want to call it, go to ESPN's Tournament Challenge. Type in Winning Cures Everything. It's going to pop right up. It's free to enter. Jump in. The winner of the uh, bracket challenge or the pool or whatever is going to get some free swag from Winning Cures Everything. And I think that's going to be a lot of fun. We've already got a lot of people in there. We appreciate all of you that have signed up. Uh, Tell a friend, all that good stuff. The tournament begins at 11.15 a.m. Central Time. And that's when all the brackets lock. So make sure that you are signed up before then if you are listening to the show early on Friday. Uh, Let's go ahead and talk about what happened in tonight's games. Good gracious. What a night of basketball. Uh, We had four double-digit comebacks. Three of them came back and won outright. One of them came back and got it to within a point. Uh, I did go three and one against the spread in the first four games, so I I feel good about that. We talked about that on Wednesday's show. Uh, Texas Southern, Johnny Walker had 19 points, nine rebounds. They were down 30 to 20 at halftime. They come back and win 60 to 52 over Mount St. Mary's. Drake, down 21 to 10 in the first half to Wichita State. They come back and win 53-52. Now, that's the one that I did not cover. I had Drake minus one and a half. If you bought the half point back or if you were able to get it when Drake was at a pick or something like that, then you covered. So, you're all good on that one. App State, down 36 to 20 at uh, at halftime. They lost the game 54 to 53. They came back and really made a run out of it. But Norfolk State gets to move on there. Uh, shout out Jalen Hawkins coming off the bench, scoring 24 points. Massive, massive game from him. And UCLA, who was down 40-26, to 26, less than three minutes left in the first half. And they come back and they beat Michigan State 86-80 to 80 in overtime. They, uh, they went on a 7 to nothing run, 5 to nothing at the end of the second half to get the game to overtime to begin with. And then score the first however many points and then just kind of run them out of the gym in overtime. I mean, it, it, was, it was really something to behold Michigan State, what they were doing. They, they looked completely lost out there. But I got to tell you, I love this format. I want more of this. Give me all four first four games on the same day every year. I would be totally fine with that. Stagger the times. It felt more like the NCAA tournament. It felt way better. You can still have two of the games in Dayton, two of the games somewhere else. It doesn't matter to me. I don't think it matters to anybody. But I think this gives it more of a tournament feel. I think it's better. I think it's way better. So cheers to Mick Cronin for getting a big, big, big win with UCLA, Michigan State, uh, incredibly inconsistent. The officiating in that game was putrid, awful. And it, I guess maybe it made it more entertaining because there were more stoppages. It was inconsistent calls. Uh, sometimes they were allowed to beat each other up under the basket. Sometimes they got called for ticky-tack. It was just all over the place. But uh, but at the end of the day, you know, game gets to overtime. It was the late tip anyway. But, yeah, that is the way it goes. That is the way that it goes. So, we'll move on from there. Not a lot to discuss as far as the recaps go. Uh, Oh, Johnny Juzang's injury, that is going to be uh, really difficult for UCLA to be able to beat BYU on Saturday now. I, I don't know that they can win without him. He is their shot creator. He is their one guy that can go get a bucket when you absolutely have to have one. He 
he led the comeback tonight. He was the guy. So, I don't know what they're going to do with Adam, but we shall see. Either way, they move on, and Michigan State is out of the bracket. Uh, Wichita State, out of the bracket, is what it is. That was, it, it was amazing to get a buzzer beater just right off the bat. I mean, it was, it was so good. So, so good. So, again, uh, we'll move into my best bets, and I, I'll explain them to you, all that good stuff. I'm not going to spend a long time. This is not going to be a super long podcast, but... Again, we do appreciate you guys tuning in and listening and watching and all that fun stuff. The best bets. We'll uh, we'll take them in order. Arkansas and Colgate, I'm going over 161 right now. Uh, all of these lines, you can find them all at sbrodds.com. Very easy to find. Colgate, 25th in tempo. Arkansas, 17th in tempo. Colgate shoots 40% from three. Arkansas, when they are playing against an, an outmanned opponent, which Colgate will be, in the spot, they will be able to run the ball back and forth, back and forth, and they will absolutely do it. It looks like Jalen uh, Williams might be able to play in this game. That is a big, big thing for Arkansas. I'm not worried about the spread here. I think that this game could end up being Arkansas, you know, 105 to 71 or something like that. I mean, it could be crazy, but I expect a ton of points because I think it's just going to be back and forth, back and forth the entire ball game. That's what I expect. So I'm going over 161. You can get that right now. Uh, number two on my list here, Utah State plus four. Uh, Craig Smith's bunch, they are eighth in defensive efficiency in the country. Um, they kind of muck it up. It, it's one of those teams that nobody thought would be here. Like everybody thought Utah State was going to be left out or maybe they would be a first four team. Instead, they've got one of the buys and they get to play against Texas Tech, who everybody loves. And somehow that line is a little short, right? If you're just looking at it from public perception, Texas Tech obviously has played the tougher schedule, all that good stuff. But I'm telling you, Craig Smith has got a really, really good club there. They are battle-tested. I I like them a lot in this spot. I think this is a favorable matchup for them. Give me Utah State plus four. I think they can, I think they can win the game. I really do. So I'm going with the Aggies plus four there. Moving on, bet number three. Oregon State plus eight and a half against Tennessee. Rick Barnes, one and four against the spread in the tournament as the head coach at Tennessee. He's two, 12, and one against the spread in the NCAA tournament in his time at Tennessee and Texas overall. Oregon State this year, 14 and four against the spread as an underdog, and they are 10 and one against the spread in their last 11 games. They are still being undervalued here. Uh, adjusted tempo in this game. Tennessee is number 233. Oregon State is 315. Tennessee, we still don't know if John Fulkerson is going to play. He uh, it, he had like a facial fracture, so we're not sure exactly what's going to go on with that, if they'll be able to get the mask, if he'll be able to see out of that eye. Uh, dirty play by the Florida player, who I think is actually going to play in the tournament. Uh, who knows? But either way, either way, I'm going to take Oregon State plus 8.5. I don't know that they can beat Tennessee. Tennessee is drastically more talented than they are, but... Tennessee leaves a lot to be desired. They are so inconsistent. They play slow. They play boring. They make mistakes all the time. It's just frustrating to watch this basketball team, especially if you are a fan of that team, which I am not. But uh, but I will take Oregon State plus 8.5. I think that they can keep this game close, and I think they got a chance to win the game. So I will, uh, I will certainly take 8.5 points there. Moving on, bet number four, I'm going with a lot of dogs. Liberty plus seven and a half against Oklahoma State. Coach, uh, let's see, uh, Richie McKay. Look, this team plays like TCU, Liberty does, and TCU swept Oklahoma State this year, like inexplicably. But here's the reason that they did it, right? Uh, or why Liberty can keep this game close and maybe even win the game, which is insane to think about because Oklahoma State, obviously, Cade Cunningham, potential number one pick in the NBA draft, all that kind of stuff. They've beaten all these other teams. But if you look at what Oklahoma State has done, they don't blow out teams. They have been in close, you know, one-two possession games all year long. Liberty, adjusted tempo is number 347. They go super slow. But they are number four in effective field goal percentage, number 10 in three-point percentage, and they are number 18 in, uh, in losing turnovers. I mean, they, they, they don't turn the ball over. They are incredibly efficient on offense. They are really good at shooting threes. This is a nightmare matchup for a young 
basketball team, and that's what Oklahoma State is. They're going to drag it down in the mud, and they are going to make it very, very difficult for Oklahoma State to get out and run. So give me Liberty plus seven and a half there. Moving on to number five, this is the last one on Friday, Winthrop plus six and a half. This is one of those that I feel like everybody's on, and it made me want to jump off of it. But look, Pat Kelsey's Eagles, I, I'm riding Winthrop. I think this is a team that can make the Sweet 16. I really do. Uh, they are number 11 in tempo. They are number 10 in offensive rebounding, number 23 in forcing turnovers. And right now, at Virginia, or Virginia, excuse me, Villanova does not have a true point guard right now. You got a team that forces turnovers. You've got a team that likes to run, cause chaos. Villanova could really be in trouble here. If I'm getting six and a half points, I'm all over that. Now, all the talent is going to be on Villanova's side. But give me Winthrop. I think this is a really well coached team. They're 23 and one straight up this year. Like I, Pat Kelsey's got a fantastic team. I think they can win the game outright. Moving on from there, I've got two other ones. UC Santa Barbara. In Joe Pasternak, we believe. I think that this is a fantastic team. Now, here's one of the issues that I've got. You might want to wait on this one. Uh, Ajari Sani, he is the sixth man of the year in the Big West. Uh, the Gauchos, you know, it, they, they kind of depend on him. He averages over 11 points a game. You know, he's like 40% from three. He rolled his ankle in the uh, in the conference tournament against UC Irvine. I mean, I don't know what that means. I, I would imagine it's definitely not good. Uh, but Creighton, I don't know. Who knows what Creighton we're going to get, right? This team is just up and down, back and forth, who knows what. Uh, but UC Santa Barbara, I mean, they are 18-1 and one since December 28th. They are number 32 in free throw percentage. Creighton is number 239, and that is a stat that absolutely makes me believe that UC Santa Barbara can stay in this game, right? They can shoot free throws. Creighton can't. That's how you can make up deficits. It, just little things like that, if you're paying attention. Uh, UC Santa, uh, Santa Barbara is a good team, and I'm all in on them. I think they I think they got a chance to be able to win this game as well. You know, give me, uh, give me the Gauchos, plus seven. And then finally, my last one of the night, Ohio plus seven and a half. This is another one that came down big time. Nobody knows what's going on with Virginia. Honestly, though, even if Virginia was playing regular, I still don't think that this is a vintage Tony Bennett team. I don't think this is a a good Virginia team. They just haven't looked very good all year. Um, Jason Preston is the superstar for Ohio. I, I really like this team. They are 6-2 and two against the spread as a dog. They are 4-0 and oh against the spread in neutral sites. Um, if you want to talk about them being able to keep up with big-time teams, they played Illinois to a two-point game earlier this year. Uh, they are... They're just a good, good, well-coached basketball team. Virginia, they are 1-5 in their last six as a favorite against the spread. Like, that's just not good. This team was not gelling anyway. So, I, I don't know what to make of them as of right now. I, I mean, obviously, they did not get into Indianapolis until today. So, or no, sorry, they did not practice until today. They don't get into Indianapolis until Friday. Like, that's insane. So, who knows, but I'm, uh, I'm going to ride that train. I'm going to take Ohio. I think they have a shot to win that game as well. All right, let's, uh, let's move on. Again, not going to be a long one, but wanted to get all this information out there before the games tip off, all that good stuff. We are going to do my personal bracket breakdown in case anybody's interested. If not, you can turn this thing off, and I appreciate the download and the listen and all that good stuff. Uh, but if you do enjoy it, share the show out. Tell your friends. Make sure you are subscribed. We will start in the West region. I'm just going to make it very simple. I'm going Gonzaga over Norfolk State. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Missouri, Oklahoma is without their starting uh, point guard. I I didn't really like either one of these teams anyway. It's just a hold your nose and, and pick whichever one. I'll take Missouri there. Uh, and then I've got Gonzaga going to the Sweet 16. I'm going to take UC Santa Barbara to beat Creighton. And then I'm going to take Ohio to beat Virginia. So I'm going to have a 12 and a 13 in the round of 32, and I'm going to take UC Santa Barbara to beat Ohio in the round of 32. So 
I'll have Gonzaga and UC Santa Barbara in the Sweet 16. I'll take Gonzaga to win that one and go to the Elite Eight. All right, moving into the bottom half of the region. I like USC over Drake a whole lot. Uh, I think Evan Mobley, like this is a perfect matchup for him. Uh, They are just going to be able to out-talent Drake in this situation. So give me USC there. And Andy Enfield is really good in the NCAA tournament. Like he's just a a very good tournament coach. I'm all over it. Uh, Kansas over Eastern Washington, even without some of the guys that they've got, they are still a way, way, way more significantly talented team than Eastern Washington. So give me Kansas there. And then I'm going to take... I'm going to take USC to beat Kansas. And, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. But I, I really like uh, USC because, that one, that's the battle of the FBI stuff, right? And, number two, I think Evan Mobley, they can, they can kind of beat up Kansas a little bit. So, I will take USC there. Uh, moving on, Oregon over VCU. I think Oregon is playing really, really good basketball. They got caught by Oregon State in the Pac-12 tournament. I don't think it matters here. Uh, VCU, very good basketball team. Not as good as Oregon. So give me Oregon. Iowa over Grand Canyon. I think that's pretty self-explanatory as well. I'm going to take Iowa to beat Oregon. And that will give us Iowa and USC in the Sweet 16. And I'll take Iowa to get back to the Elite Eight for a rematch against Gonzaga. And then I'm going to take Gonzaga to beat Iowa again to get to the Final Four. Now... Moving on from the West, we're going to go down to the East. Uh, You know, Michigan, I don't know what to make of them. Uh, I think they should be able to handle Texas Southern fairly easily, even without Isaiah Livers. Um, But in the second round is where it gets tricky. Uh, LSU or St. Bonaventure is capable of beating Michigan if they do not have Livers or Eli Brooks, for that matter. So, you know, I'm going to take LSU here, and then I'm going to take LSU going into the Sweet 16. I think they can upset Michigan. So, moving on from there, Colorado, I'm going to take them over Georgetown. I think they are a better version of Georgetown. Georgetown got hot at the right time. They were playing out of their minds. They were shooting the three ball like crazy. I don't know that they're going to be able to do that here in this situation. Uh, McKinley Wright, I think, is going to be the best player on the floor for either team. I, You know, I'm all over it. Give me Colorado there. And then I'll take Florida State to beat UNC Greensboro. So that'll give us Colorado and Florida State in that second round. And I'll take Florida State over Colorado. I I don't, something is wrong with Florida State right now. But uh, if you're giving me UNC Greensboro and then Colorado, I think Florida State can win both of those games. In the Sweet 16, I'll have Florida State against LSU. And and I like Florida State. Florida State doesn't really have to play particularly well to be able to make it to an Elite Eight here. It, especially if Michigan gets knocked off in the round of 32 without Isaiah Livers. That's a, that's a pretty big deal. So give me Florida State to make the Elite Eight here. Um, LSU, like if Florida State can match up the athletes with LSU. And, and then it just comes down to who, who ends up messing it up. And I think LSU is more likely to mess it up than Florida State. So moving on, BYU against UCLA. Uh, without uh, Johnny Juzang, like I that's... That's a tough ask for UCLA. Uh, give me BYU there. I like this BYU team. I, I like Matt Harms. I like what they're doing. Give me uh, BYU there. I like Texas over Abilene Christian, although that one could get tricky. Abilene Christian has got some dogs, man. They've got Juco guys, and, I mean, they that's a tough, tough basketball team. Uh, there's a reason why that spread is so short. If you hadn't looked at the line, go look at the line. Uh, this is a team that just won the Big 12 in Texas, and now they've got a, a kind of short spread against Abilene Christian. It's a little surprising, but Abilene Christian, 23-4 and four on the season. Not a not a bad basketball team, but I will take Texas and Shaka Smart there. Uh, I will take BYU to upset Texas. This is one that, that nobody is expecting, nobody is talking about. BYU has played really good basketball. Uh, I think that they, they can make a run here, and I will take them to get to the Sweet 16. UConn and Maryland. I have gone back and forth, back and forth on this game. Uh, Maryland has the dudes to be able to slow down UConn. And if James Booknight can't get going, I don't know that UConn can win. They are 11-3 and three with Booknight. And they are 4-4 uh, four and four without him. Like, I, you know, I, I, I think they're better than Maryland. 
I don't know that for certain. Maryland obviously has played stiffer competition, I think. But UConn's still a really good basketball team. I'll take UConn to win here. Uh, Alabama over Iona. And the Rick Patino story is fantastic. He and Nate Oates, there's a great article at Yahoo Sports from Pete Thamel who talks about the changing of the guard. And, you know, Rick Patino came into this tournament back in the late 80s with Providence, and he was revolutionizing the three-point shot and all that. And Nate Oates now is taking it to a different level by changing things and going with the analytics of the sport and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a really fun read. Uh, I do think Alabama is much more talented than Iona. You give, you give Rick Patino a couple of years in Iona, and I, I think he'll have them back in a Sweet 16. I don't think it's from the number 15 position. So give me Alabama there, and I've got Alabama over UConn, although that one could get really tricky. And so, But I'll, I'll take Alabama. That's a bit of a homer move. I understand that. But at the same time, maybe not. I mean, Alabama is the two seed for a reason. Uh, Alabama against BYU. I'm going to take Alabama in that one as well. I, I, just significantly more talented. Um, BYU, they could get caught by Texas just based on athleticism alone. But this is a team that can shoot. Alabama is a team that also can shoot. Texas, maybe not so much. So I, I'll take Alabama over BYU here, and then I will take Alabama over Florida State to get to the Final Four, and that puts us into the South region. Baylor over Hartford. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I don't have to go much further into that one. North Carolina over Wisconsin. I don't feel great about that, but this is a, a talent matchup, and Wisconsin, I mean, 17-12 and 12 on the season. North Carolina looked like they were getting kind of hot. I like the offensive rebounding of North Carolina. Uh, they got... And they got a lot of length. They got some tall dudes. So I, I like their matchup there. Um, and so Baylor over North Carolina to get to the Sweet 16. Um, and Because I think, I think Baylor's back to right. I think, I think they're back to doing what they do. Uh, it's been plenty of time since the, the COVID pause for them. And, and they appear to be shooting the ball well. Uh, all the reports out of Indianapolis are that they are just hitting the running lights out. So... Uh, I'm going to take Winthrop to upset Villanova. I love what Pat Kelsey's got going on with the Eagles. I'm going to take Purdue over North Texas. And then I'm going to take Purdue over Winthrop. Nope, I'm not. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to take Winthrop to beat Purdue. I just did this on the fly. <laughs> I'll have to go update my other brackets. But, uh, but yeah, I am going to take Winthrop to upset Purdue. And get to the Sweet 16. So we're going to have Baylor against Winthrop. Um, and then I'll take Baylor to get to the Elite Eight. Moving to the lower half of the bracket, Texas Tech against Utah State. I think Craig Smith can give Texas Tech all kinds of fits here. This is a great coaching matchup. I, Chris Beard, everybody loves him because two years ago, obviously, went to the national championship game. Now, they were beaten by Virginia late in that game. And Chris Beard is a fantastic coach. But this is not that same team. Matt McClung is a lot of fun to watch. I get that. But they don't have a bunch of, you know, NBA first-round dudes. They don't have lottery picks on this team. And the defense is not there, which is really surprising. That's typically what Chris Beard does. But the defensive efficiency is good, not great. Uh, the offensive efficiency is pretty good, but it can disappear at times. They can get really streaky. I I don't know how much I trust uh Texas Tech here, so I'm going to go Utah State here. Uh, moving on down, Arkansas against Colgate. I think Arkansas has just got a lot more dudes. This is a crazy numbers game. Uh, lots of points. I've already given them out as the best bet for the over 161, but I will take Arkansas to beat Colgate, and then I will take Arkansas to beat Utah State in the next round to get to the Sweet 16. Florida against Virginia Tech. This is a coin flip. Virginia Tech, it feels like I feel like they've probably played like three games in the last month and a half. Like it's it's insane how many pauses and whatnot. I just they they gave North Carolina some fits in the ACC tournament. Still lost to them. I, I think Florida can probably outman them here. I I mean it wouldn't surprise me if Virginia Tech wins, but I'm going to take Florida here. Uh, and it doesn't really matter. Florida, I've got them going to the second round. Ohio State over Oral Roberts. Then I'm going to take Ohio State over Florida, and then. I'm going to take Arkansas to beat Ohio State to get to the Elite Eight to give us a Baylor against Arkansas matchup. 
And I'll take Baylor to get to the Final Four, make their first Final Four appearance under Scott Drew, and I'm all about that. All right, now, finally, we will move to the Midwest region, and I'm going to take Illinois over Drexel. I'm going to take Loyola Chicago over Georgia Tech, and that really sucks for Josh Pastner. Uh, Moses Wright being out for this game due to like, contact tracing or whatever it is, that's just painful. Like, you hate to see that. Uh, he was the ACC Player of the Year, and I don't know that Georgia Tech can win without him. Now, they're on a bit of a run, and they still got Jose Alvarado and all that, but I, that this is a tough ask, and, and it was already a tough ask anyway because Loyola Chicago, I mean, they, they rate as a top 10, top 15 team anyway. Um, I'll, I'll trust Porter Mosier here, and then we'll have the battle for Illinois with Illinois and Loyola Chicago. Give me Illinois there. I think they are just a much more talented team. So, uh, moving on, Tennessee over Oregon State. I don't trust it, but again, talent and whatnot. Oregon State has not been great all season. They've been pretty good. They've been able to cover spreads and whatnot, but I I don't trust either one of these, really. Uh, are we going to get the same Oregon State team that just ran through the Pac-12 tournament, or are we going to get the one that played, you know, for most of the season? And who knows? And then which Tennessee team is going to show up? The one that showed up in the first half against Alabama that had an 11-point lead or the one that got outscored by 16 in the second half? Who knows? So, I will take Tennessee there. Uh, Oklahoma State over Liberty. Again, don't feel great about that. I would actually feel better about Oklahoma State over Tennessee than I would uh, over Liberty just because of the style of play. Uh, I already talked about that in the best bets. Liberty plays at the number 347 uh, tempo. In the country, like they slow it down and they drag you through the mud and all that, and they play really efficiently. Like it's not great for a young basketball team, uh, but Oklahoma State getting to the second round, and then I think that they can just, you know, Cade Cunningham can turn it on against Tennessee. Um, I think that's one of those games where he would do that. So, and then Illinois over Oklahoma State in the uh, Sweet 16 to get to the uh, Elite Eight. Moving on down to the half part of the Midwest region. San Diego State over Syracuse, I like here. I think San Diego State is a fantastic defensive team. Syracuse uh, typically does well from the double-digit seed spot, especially, you know, in, in the past however many years under Jim Beheim. But I'm going to take San Diego State. I I like what Brian Crutcher's doing. I am a fan of that team. I, I really think that this is a, a good basketball team. I've got West Virginia over Moorhead State. Uh Moorhead State has won a lot of games in a row. This is a really well-coached team. I think they are severely outmanned here. West Virginia has been looking for a win for a while. They have not gotten it in Big 12 play. This is a step down in competition for them, and they typically blow teams out that are uh, a step down in competition. So, especially this season, I'm going to take them in this spot. However, I'm going to take San Diego State to upset West Virginia to get into the Sweet 16. And then from there... Going further down, Rutgers over Clemson. I'm going to take Houston over Cleveland State. Uh, pretty big there. I will take Houston to beat Rutgers, and then I will take Houston to beat San Diego State to meet up with Illinois. And this is my upset here. I'm going to take Houston to get to the Final Four. I think this is a really well-coached team. Kelvin Sampson, all that good stuff. Uh, I just I think, it's, I think this might be their year. Uh, things have kind of fallen well for them. So I, I will take them in this spot. Baylor against Houston. I'm going to take Baylor to get to the national championship game. Gonzaga against Alabama. I'm going to take Gonzaga. It's a little chalky. I understand. Uh, and then I'm going to take Gonzaga to win the national championship. This seems like that kind of season. Uh, it's been like this in every other sport. The best team has ended up winning it all. And Gonzaga all season has been the best team. I don't think it's a question. I think Mark Few finally gets that monkey off his back. I'm all in on it. So... Looks like we got that thing in in under uh, 30 minutes or so, which works out well. It's uh, it's a little drab. If you weren't too interested in all the picks and whatnot, I totally understand. But I did want to make sure I got them on the record so that everybody knew what was going on. Again, join in our bracket pool. It's over on ESPN in the Tournament Challenge. Just search out Winning Cures Everything or just click down in the description. We would certainly appreciate that. I'm going to try and do a recap of some sort uh, every night. We'll see if it actually happens. But that is the plan as of right now. So, again, make sure that you are subscribed to the podcast, subscribe to YouTube and whatnot, and we will get these things knocked out. So, winningcureseverything.com, 
sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. Share the show out. Make sure you are subscribed. All that good stuff. And, of course, I hope that you all end up having a great, great NCAA tournament weekend. I hope that all of your tickets cash. All that good stuff. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And hopefully, we cash some tickets this weekend. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.